The truth about our world is that it's not one that's easy to live in or survive in at times. It can be a harsh place where random things happen. People and animals are unpredictable, and just when you think you know something, you learn you knew nothing of the sort and you're going to suffer as a result. And as a former television show liked to note, there are well over 1,000 ways to die, so you need to be as smart as you can in order to stay amongst the living. Here now are 20 unknown facts that might save your life one day. Number 20. Don't touch the whale. Now, I want you to picture a scene that many of you have likely witnessed live or have even maybe seen on a television show or in a movie. You're on the beach, there are a bunch of people gathered around something, and as you get closer you notice that there is a whale that's been beached on the shoreline. Uh, this right here is actually one of the greatest mysteries of the world, mainly because a lot of scientists can't even figure out how whales honestly end up on the beach, but this is where the unknown facts come into play, because if if it's a live whale, you should absolutely help it, or at the very least call in a professional to try to help it. However, if you're looking at a confirmed and dead whale, you need to get away from it and whatever you do, do not touch it. But why is that? Because when whales decompose, it's not the prettiest of things to see, and I meant that literally. They're known to have the gases trapped within them, and as a result, they bulge and shift in looks so that at times you don't even recognize that it's even a whale at all that you're looking at. Oh, and if you were to touch it and potentially put a crack in its shell, if you will, then it could likely explode all over you. Yes, for real. If you're in the unfortunate position to be next to a bulging whale, it may just explode and send itself all over you and everything else within a local area. So the Cliff Notes version is this, live whale, you can help it, dead whale, stay away. This is why touching a dead whale is so dangerous. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Avoid the blue ringed octopuses. Now, if you were to be told right now, not by me of course, to stay away from an octopus, you'd likely picture that warning to be tailored around the fact that they can grab onto you with their little suction cup tentacles and that they can be much larger than the average human, meaning that they can put the pressure on you and grind you to a pulp. Well, that technically could happen, but given that octopuses aren't known for interacting with humans all that much, it's actually quite doubtful. That being said, when it comes to the blue ringed octopus, they are one species that you should avoid for a much more life-preserving reason, and that's because this is a species of octopus that's able to kill you via a venom that it has within its body. Not just any old run-of-the-mill venom, it's a very special one that you all know as tetrodotoxin. This is the same one that's used by the puffer fish to, well, kill everything that touches it, and this octopus is much more mobile than any kind of fish. Not to mention that unlike the previous octopus warning, you have to worry about its size, and why? Well, because they're actually rather small, so it may just be that you come across one by accident, then you disturb it, and it's enough so that it bites you, and yes, these octopuses bite, and then it injects you with its venom. Now, if you didn't know, this species of octopus has enough venom within it to kill 26 humans at once, so you tell me, would you want to get close enough to something like that as you're diving through the water? I didn't really think so. Number 18. Danger! Cross waves incoming. Anyone who's been surfing or swimming in big waters off the coast of a country may well know that waves can be a very dangerous thing. After all, they're a true force in the ocean, and as a result of that, you need to be mindful of how you take them head on. But some of you might be curious when you see that the surface of the water via the waves turns into a checkerboard pattern. This is a very rare occurrence, but it does happen in key parts of the world where certain things go on, as we'll soon detail. But if you think that this is something cool that you need to swim in, well, you'd be wrong. 
Very, very wrong, in fact, because what's actually going on here is what's known as cross waves. This is what occurs when two different sea areas clash and then intersect. The currents of each side go into each other, and the grid-like pattern is then born. It's very visual, and you can see it easily from above, but if you were to actually swim in waters like this, you'd be at the mercy of some incredibly powerful and violent currents. Just a regular current can be enough to cause you harm, but these particular currents are enough to make you go away and have been known to mess with ships and boats that try to go through their waters. So in other words, if you do see one of these cross waves, appreciate them from the safety of the beach or a high vantage point if you're seeing them from there. Number 17. Siri can save you. Technology at times can be a very ironic thing. The reason we say that is because we've made technology so complex and complicated at times that you wonder if it's really doing more than just the basics of things. Phones are a great example of this. When we went from landlines to cell phones, it was all good and fine for most at first. But once the smartphone came into play, many wondered if they were actually necessary, especially when they got AI put onto them. Well, for one woman, she learned that it was vital to have that AI, as it actually saved her daughter's life. One mother from Australia had come upon her daughter in a state of not breathing. Her lips were blue, and she knew that she had to call 911 in order to get an ambulance to her quickly. The problem was, though, that in her panic state, she dropped her phone and couldn't reach it where it had landed. Thinking quickly, she then asked Siri to call an ambulance, and that's exactly what the AI did. Now, I bet that some of you didn't actually know that Siri could do that, mainly because you can sometimes ask questions that will stump the AI, but indeed, in a pinch, you could ask it to call for help, and that could be the difference between life and death. Surely enough, the ambulance arrived in time, and the baby was saved. Granted, it is still fine that you don't trust technology as much as others do, but at the very least, it should be appreciated that it does grant people the ability to save lives. Because if that mother didn't have this phone or had to rush to get it and potentially not be with her baby, things could have gone a whole lot worse than what they did. Number 16. At Gunpoint now, I'll be quite frank here, this is a tip that I hope that none of you have to live out because this will be one of the scariest scenarios that you'll ever go through. In our world today, and especially in places like the United States, a lot of people can get access to guns. While some of those are for fair use, self-defense, or even to go hunting during proper season, there is a portion of the population that like to get them in order to commit crimes. And when that happens, people are usually held up at gunpoint. And while many movies like to glorify what you can do if you're in this position, especially if you're an action movie hero or a kung fu master, one police chief honestly weighed in on what you should do if the situation arrives, and it could actually save your life. The most important thing is to just stay calm. Yes, it'll be really hard to do that, but if you can manage it, then you're off to a great start. Because if you can stay calm, you can think more rationally and ensure, even if only briefly, that you have moves on the board. The next step is to look at your attacker. Don't focus on the gun, look right into the attacker's eyes, because this forces them to make a connection with you, even if they won't admit it out loud. And after that, you can establish what they are in terms of their crime. If they're a criminal that's robbing you, and you play things the right way, they may leave you be. And if they're using you as a hostage, they actually need you alive, because you're their leverage. Doing these things and making sure you don't set off a response from the gun wielder may just save your life in the end. Number 15. Bathtub Protection now we'll go to something a little less stressful, but not necessarily less dangerous. That of a tornado. Depending on where you are in the world, tornadoes are going to be a real threat that you might face, especially during key seasons. Though, as noted more recently in places like Illinois and Kentucky, they can happen in the random months that you won't expect them to, like December, for example. Regardless of all that, if you are home, there are various places that you're told to go in order to stay safe, mainly those without windows, so that you don't get hit by shards of glass, as well as places with sturdy walls so that the tornado will really have to hit you hard in order to get to you. But the place that some of you might have been told to go is the bathtub. But why is that? 
Well, there's multiple reasons, really. Though, we do need to note that not every bathtub and bathroom are created equal. You'll want one that is away from the edge walls of your home, so one that's much more inward and protected by levels of walls. The other reasons that this is a good idea is that many tubs are actually made out of strong substances like cast iron. That stuff isn't going to be blown away by the wind very easily. Not to mention, most tubs are bolted into the foundation in order to prevent them from moving around, and that also adds an extra layer of protection. As a bonus, if you were to lay inside of a tub and then put something like a heavy blanket over you, the tub and the blanket can help to protect you from debris. And if something does crash through the wall and towards you, the tub will act as a nice stopper in order to ensure it requires a lot of energy to hit you. Number 14. Walk and Talk in the famous television show The West Wing, there was a legendary segue piece that would occur in multiple episodes throughout its run known as The Walk and Talk. Basically, the characters would go throughout the White House in heavy discussion and go from hallway to hallway or room to room and talk the night away until eventually they end up where they need to be. You want to know why that's a fine and safe way to do things? Because they don't have cell phones in their hands. Yes, really, if you want a surefire way to save your life and ensure that you don't get into accidental trouble, just don't walk and talk on a cell phone. And if you don't care about your life, well, shame on you. Then allow us to give you a more basic reason, your phone. You see, when you walk and talk with someone, you're distracted, but you're still paying attention. Or at the very least, the other person will be paying attention for you. However, when you're on your phone, you're harm stringing one of your arms, and more than likely your eyes are going to be anywhere other than where you need them to be, depending on how in-depth your conversation is. Walking may seem like a natural thing, and it really is, but the catch is that you need to pay attention as you go and walk around. Or else you may end up walking into things, getting hit by things, or even being tripped up by something. You'll break your phone and then you'll really be paying attention to the phone that you just lost and now have to replace. Is that a good enough reason? Number 13. Mirror Adjusting when you're driving, there are various things that you need to do to ensure that you're driving safely. I'll assume that you know what most of them are because, well, we're already scared of the road. We'd rather not be thinking about you being a bad driver out there. But even the most astute and safe of drivers, like we hope that you are, don't know everything. A great example of this is with your mirrors specifically both the rear and side view mirrors. These are the ones that you can adjust, and many of you likely adjust one of them every time you get into the car, the rear view. But why that one? Well, it's on a hinge, and thus it can move around as you're driving, raising or lowering the mirror from where you need it to be when you enter the car. This is a good thing to adjust on the regular. However, the side mirrors are ones that you likely don't touch as much because they're already in position due to their harder fixed points and thus don't need adjustment, right? Well, wrong. Because to be completely safe and eliminate blind spots, you'll want to adjust them to 15 degrees so that they're on an extension of your rear view and thus do give you the total viewing of your car, which includes the blind spot areas. Blind spots are where you can't see the cars to the sides of you and not being aware of them can actually lead to accidents. So why not just eliminate that as a whole and adjust your mirrors already? Number 12. Fire Safety Awareness Do you remember when you were in school and they would do those fire drills to make sure that you knew what happened if you were in danger? I lived so close to my school that I just walked home, and then I'd eat a little sandwich and maybe watch some television, pet my cat, mess around, and eventually I'd go back to class. Well, while those may have seemed like tedious and unnecessary things, it was actually the beginning of a really good procedure that many don't follow to this day. By that, I mean that most people don't know what to do if they're trapped in a building that's caught on fire. Many just flee to the staircases and try to get out as fast as possible, but that's only a good idea if it actually works. As a result, you should familiarize yourself with what to do when you're in a fire scenario, and that includes remembering where to go, 
where the fire extinguishers are so you can use them, and so on. You'll also want to check your smoke detectors on the regular so that you can rely on them to detect the things early on that they need to. And if you're a boss or a leader at a company or business, make sure that you have a way of your employees knowing what to do in a fire situation because the last thing that you want is for everyone to panic because they don't know what's going on. And you're thinking of that scene from The Office, aren't you? Well, yes, that's a great example of them not knowing what to do. But then again, most of the people in that office were idiots, and I hope that you're a whole lot smarter than them. Number 11. Takeoff and Landing they say that flying is the safest mode of travel, and to be fair, it really is. It may look and seem impossible to be safe in a giant metal shell that can somehow fly and then maybe even crash into the ground, but all that being said, there are things that you do need to know in order to ensure that you don't end up a statistic when one of these flights actually goes wrong. For example, you might think that just because a plane is about to take off or land that you're fine doing whatever you want to, but no, in in fact, it's actually the opposite of how you should feel. In the plane industry, there's a term called plus three minus eight. That refers to the periods of time when a plane is most likely to crash. In this case, that would be about three minutes after takeoff and about eight minutes before it's about to land. A bit of an arbitrary thing, well, sure, but the facts do back it up, and as a result of that, you will want to listen to the flight attendant when they give you suggestions and or orders for when a plane is about to take off or land. It may all seem kind of frivolous, but if you partake in them and the worst should come to pass in regards of a plane crash, you'll find out soon enough that you're more likely to live because you actually listened and paid attention and gave them the respect that they deserve for doing their job. And besides that, wouldn't you rather live to see another day? Number 10. Bleach and Ammonia While you're doing cleaning, it can sometimes feel like a natural impulse to mix a certain amount of cleaning products to ensure that you can get a more true clean, and at times that may be fine. However, if you do mix the wrong ingredients, then you're going to be in trouble. Key among them, that is, if you decide to mix bleach and ammonia, well, that's terrible. But why? Because when they mix, you get a very dangerous thing called chloramine gas, which is toxic to people and animals. In fact, if you were to mix them and get exposed, here are just some of the most lovely side effects that you can expect to have. They include coughing, nausea, shortness of breath, watery eyes, chest pain, irritation to the throat, nose, and eyeballs, wheezing, pneumonia, and fluid in the lungs. Mmm, delicious. And that's just the short-term effects. If you have longer exposure to that gas, you might even be placed into a coma or die. And in case you didn't know, that would be bad. Now, you might think that because I don't have ammonia in my house, that you're safe, but are you really so sure about that? In addition to using ammonia, as a cleaning product, it can also be found in some glass, some window cleaners, interior and exterior paints, and more items that you might have within your reach. So just do your best to find out where it is and isn't, and then keep your bleach far away from it. Number 9. A Fishy Smell have you ever wandered into your home and gotten a whiff of a smell that you just can't place? As in you recognize it, but you have no idea where it's coming from. Now, depending on the smell itself, your house could be in danger of catching fire. Not being on fire at the moment, but close. So what's the smell that you should be looking out for? Well, it's one of cooking fish or urine, but let's focus on the fish. Nine times out of 10, a fishy smell throughout the home means that you have overheating electrical components, obviously not really something that you want. Your home's wiring is meant to be heat resistant, but even those have its limits. And so in the case of overheating, the wires melt and then they emit a smell that resonates as fish. That's just some food for thought. Number eight. Fire and Water Since I'm on the topic of fire situations, I'll talk about one of the most common ways to ensure your home burns down, a grease fire. Typically occurring because of a cooking incident or an accident, grease fires are known to be rather violent and incredibly fast spreading, so you need to put it out ASAP in order to make it happen. The problem, though, is that most people think that because it's a fire, you just douse it with water. However, that's bad in a myriad of ways. 
Grease fires can burn a whole lot hotter because of the water exposure, and it even creates a massive fireball if you pour water on it. That's not a good thing. So how do you put it out then? Well, if it's small enough, you can cut the oxygen source off by putting a lid on the pan, or you can put baking soda on it to smother it out. Finally, if you have a Class B dry chemical fire extinguisher, then you can use that. However, don't ever, ever use water on a grease fire. Number 7. Tornado Watchers now, I'm not going to lie to you, even though tornadoes are extremely dangerous, they can also be true wonders to look at. And whether you're a tornado chaser, or just happen to be someone who's watching it because it suddenly appeared, you can get wrapped up in their awe. The catch here, though, is that how they move might just determine how much danger you're in, because tornadoes make it clear which direction they're going, at most times, but you might come across one that you'll swear is standing still. Guess what? It's not. Rather, if you see one that is still, it actually means it's moving directly at you. So if that becomes the case, you should run and get to cover, either in a ditch, or if you're close to somebody's house that you know, or even your own home, get in there and get to cover. Believe me, you'll thank me later. Number 6. Snow and Spit now let's picture another natural disaster, an avalanche. This is one that nobody wants to be caught up in because of the dangers of being trapped in the snow and the disorientation that you might feel when you wake up and end up being surrounded by it. So if you're indeed in that situation, here's what you want to do. Simply spit. No, really, spit into the snow. Then watch the spit and see where it goes. Remember, gravity only has one direction, which is straight down, and as a result of that, the spit will go down towards the ground, and you can use that as a compass to make sure that you're digging up so that you can get out of your current snowy predicament. Saving your life doesn't mean being complicated at times. It's the basics that can help you guide yourself out and save your life if you allow them. Number 5. Snake Identification Snakes are a very interesting yet very dangerous creature of our world. I'd be willing to bet that no matter where you are in regards of watching this video, a snake might just be close to you right now. Scary thoughts aside, there's one very particular danger when it comes to snakes, and believe it or not, it's not the venom that they might have. Rather, it's you being able to tell whether or not they're venomous to begin with because pretty much all snakes bite, but you want a snake that has a dry bite and not a venomous one. You know, so you can live. But how do you tell the difference? Well, simply look at their heads. Most venomous snakes have a triangular head, and non-venomous ones have rounded heads. The non-toxic ones will even try to flatten their heads in order to mimic the venomous ones. But then again, the best path? Well, that may just be to stay away from snakes to begin with. Number four. Depth Charge Survival Oddly specific? Well, yes, this one comes from Mythbusters, so we can't help but talk about it. When it comes to explosions, there are only a few guaranteed ways to ensure that you survive. But in the military, they tell you that if you're in the water when a depth charge goes off, to make sure that you're flat and treading water on the surface so that you can survive it. Many explosion tests later, and that was indeed proven true, the pressure waves of the explosion, you know, the thing that may kill you, has trouble breaking from one surface into another. So if you are treading water, the waves will loosen their intensity because your body is on two different surfaces at the same time. Is that cool? Well, not that you should be near a lot of depth charges, but we think so. Number 3. Potatoes Imagine right now that you're stranded in an area with very little food, no immediate way of communicating with others, and you can only bring one kind of food to try to survive as you make your way back to civilization. What food would you bring? The answer, if not obvious, is potatoes. But why? Well, potatoes are an excellent survival food due to the fact that they contain nearly every nutrient that's needed for human survival, including vitamin C, amino acids, and even protein. And you'll want that as you try to make it out of the wild wherever you are. Ironically, there are tales of people who have survived for long periods of time on just potatoes, so it's no wonder that Samwise Gamgee was so high up on them. 
Number 2. Harmonica Now, for most people, the harmonica is a simple yet fun way of making music occur at things like a campsite or even when you're alone in the woods. But here's the thing, it's a lot more useful than you may think, because it can be an extension of your arm when in a pinch, as well as something that could save your life. For example, if you keep it shiny, it can be used as a signal mirror if you aim it at the sun in the right way. The metal covers can be taken off and ground down to make a knife in a pinch, or it can even be used to make a finger splint. It can open bottles if you forgot your opener, and even allow you to make a fire by using the wood inside of it. Number 1. The Heimlich Maneuver Speaking from experience, the Heimlich Maneuver does work. It may seem like something incredibly violent or awkward, but when you're choking on something, do you really have time to judge people for trying to save your life in that way? Or if your friend is in need, don't you think it's fair for you to do all you can to save them? The Heimlich Maneuver is still viable to this day, and as a result, you and all of those around you should know the maneuver in order to ensure that you get things done and, you know, maybe survive. That's all from the realm of things you need to know in order not to die a random death. Did you honestly know some of these things beforehand, or did you learn something from this video? Which of these random facts do you feel other people need to know? And are there some that were left out from the list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below, check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.